Hey guys, good morning. How are you? How's everybody doing? How is your Monday morning going so far? <laughs> Mine is kind of turning out to be big Monday mood. We'll see how that continues, I guess. <laughs> so we're working on comics again, of course. I wanted to kind of talk about coloring today and how I decided on the coloring tablet for my comic. So if you guys have any questions or anything, just let me know. If you're watching in the future, let me know in the comments. I try to respond to as many of those as I can. this morning for the first time which is like amazing I mean I drew on it yesterday I haven't streamed with it yet if it gets too like wonky we'll just move back to the Huon tablet until I can get like a case or something for this so that it uh, sits a little better I am using a giant squishmallow to hold it right now <laughs> that's like a whole thing not it this is not the page I'm supposed to be working on hello <laughs> I've been super super impressed by how responsive this tablet is it's kind of amazing I'm kind of in love it's a lot better than my my 2018 iPad for sure and like fill these little spindly areas like this and it just never works out. I should just learn that I need to color those in by hand because they're too small. They're too small for the select and fill tool.
forgot to pull up my color reference sheet. <laughs> So I started working on this comic um, November last year. And I kind of knew from the start I didn't want to do full color. I wanted to make sure that I was using a limited palette so that everything kind of meshed together really nicely. So I really intentionally picked this kind of warm gray and these weird kind of gross greens. I like my work better when it has a limited palette to it and it doesn't have quite so like broad of a color spectrum to it. of um, Frankenweenie and I really like the look of Vincent, the Tim Burton short. A lot of those things that have kind of like a gray tone and then they have one sharp color. So I wanted to kind of give this that sort of a concept to it for the colors. And then I also wanted to make sure that I could color kind of quickly. This is the first one I've done. So I like, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't over planning for myself too much at least you know as much as can be avoided <laughs> Looks like we're kind of missing a contrasting color here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add like a, a runner to the stairs.
go. That looks a little bit better. Hey, Nate, how are you? Good morning. hanging out doing some coloring are you off for the holiday today why is this why isn't it coloring it is it's just a giant fluffy 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 brush oh awesome well i'm glad you get the day off that's awesome always good So I did a bunch of color tests when I was first deciding on this color scheme and decided that I liked this kind of warm pumpkin-y orange at half, oh, sorry, uh, at half like opacity. There were a couple of like other options. One of them was a purple, one of them was like a matching green. This one just had such a good contrast. To Wyoming for the weekend to visit a friend heading back today. Nice! Love a little weekend vacay. Very nice. 
but hopefully it was very relaxing. I love Wyoming. just hang out or did you go see any of the like national parks or anything Yellowstone is? It was just a long drive. <laughs> Fair. Kind of fun though. I like road tripping. So not not much to do. Yeah, that's fair. what to do with this like greenhouse scene probably a lot of green <laughs> that shouldn't be here. Hi, Bucky. Hey, Devin. Yep, we are mic'd up today. How's you guys' Monday going?
just doing some chill vibes today, painting some plants. Seven K monies. Ah, the in office thing, Devin, that's so rough. Also, I feel like having your car in the shop is maybe extraneous circumstances that they should allow for. Oh, your coworker feels better. Bucky, I would say don't give up on it and just contact customer service. See if you can get back in. Very stressful. Try to try not to give up though. There's got to be a recovery. Yep, I agree. This iPad display is so crazy for coloring. I've never seen anything like it. to like even put a screen protector on this sucker because it is so cool. I feel like a kid who just got a new art supply and is like, hee 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 hee.
there's a version of these that's like printable. <laughs> Kurt Russell, not the actor. <laughs> I immediately saw Kurt Russell, the actor, and completely excluded the not from that sentence. I'm 100% certain the colors won't quite be as cool as they are on the the like the iPad Pro liquid retina whatever <laughs> and like nothing's ever cool when you move from backlit to print so i'm not too worried about it possible some of these aren't going to be printable. We're going to worry about that when we get to there. anything under that. There we go. I'm like, why won't that color? <laughs> Weird. Why are you upset with how it looks when it's printed? And also, the, sec the follow-up for that would be, how are you printing it? printer blows. Oh, let's go to an actual printer. Okay. Okay. So, online printer, maybe? That might be a good option. A bit darker than I want. The values are never as clearly separated. Yeah. It took me buying a, cam a Canon Pixma and, like, blowing basically half of a half of a package of printer or of a photo paper to get my printer settings dialed. It was brutal. But now they're saved and I just can print things out that way now. It's never going to it's never going to look quite like it is on a screen, of course, cuz the backlight adds like a lot of like magic contrast and like other things. Thank you. 
Yeah. I looked at several options when I was looking to get things printed for the first time and ended up just buying a printer because I wanted the control. And I didn't want to have to go back and forth on, on like proofs forever. Losing your local print shop is like devastating though. <laughs> printed at a UPS store like a hometown UPS store don't really print enough to justify a new printer yeah I mean the giant scan bed is always awesome I have found um, that recently the scanner printer combos have started being kind of crappy on the print end though which is honestly annoying because the technology is there I feel like that shouldn't be how it is, but it is. We had an Epson printer right before uh, it died, mysteriously. I will probably never buy an Epson printer again. Even their highest reviewed, like, it doesn't ever do, like, clogged heads because um, it's, like, made for people who don't print very often. Like, even that one was constantly needing cleaning, constantly needing tweaking, waste of ink. Oh, my God. The Canon, I haven't even had to run a, a head cleaning once. Like, we did it in the beginning because it was part of, like, the setup, but... pace because it's so fun. Seventy-five percent of your ink gets blown in head cleaning every time I need to print. It's super, super dumb. So our last printer, which we tucked away in a closet because I don't know if I'll ever need a scanner again, um, it was an Epson combo. It was like a, a printer and scanner. I don't know. I've just found that like. The ones that are just photo printers are better than the ones that are like, it's a printer, it's a scanner, it's a fax machine, it's a stovetop oven.
It'll fix your car. It'll do an oil change. It does basic first aid. Those are just silly. It's a jack of all trades. Yeah, jack shit of all trades. <laughs> That's fair. It seems like a fair assessment. I think we're going to reverse light. I do need the right brush though. Hello. Duh. extremely moody so hopefully we can get there with just these colors we'll see moody is like usually about the lighting so we should be able to Sometimes when I'm when I'm looking for like a more moody scene like this, I will add my shadow layer over the whole layer and then take it back out again instead of um, instead of like adding shadows to things, I'll subtract light instead. It kind of just gives you a more like it tones the whole piece and then you can kind of take it back to where you need it.
can see how I'm kind of doing these, like, I'm cutting back out these kind of moonbeams that I want to be hitting these plants. I'm using the light to kind of like highlight this area a little bit, but I'm also using the shadow to add back in even more detail than we're, than we're in my inks and colors. Batman the Animated Series, they used pastels for all of the backgrounds and they started with black paper to ensure everything was super shadowy. That's cool. Very cool. I wonder how that would work with um, with digital work. If you could do that same kind of like thing. Also because this is an establishing shot, I'm gonna go back in with like a third shadow layer and I'm gonna do even deeper, moodier shadows on top of this just to kind of like, I'm sure just like you're doing it, they probably start with a really dark background and then add slowly layers. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So I finished the second season of Witcher. That's what the song reminded me of. watching the series and what did you think of the second season? Season one was like a very, I don't know. I was not really here for season one. Season two, I really liked though. It was actually kind of awesome. 
I'm not sure if that's due to like a budget increase or what. Watching the honest reviews for Witcher last night, the like honest trailers, so funny compared to, to like Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> building was pretty decent the whole like Yennefer character really bugged me her whole arc was just like mm, no nah I don't think so this season the new season has like a lot less not a lot less Yennefer but like a lot less weird time travel-y bullshit so it's just kind of more of a straightforward plot instead of like jumping around through time which is weird I did find myself getting annoyed that that Geralt keeps having people portal him places <laughs> I mean I guess it's faster than like traveling all over the continent but like it seemed kind of ex machina uh, just kind of like super convenient to have a mage there that could portal you I didn't like her. I didn't like her in the first season. She's a lot better in the second season. Um, and like, there's like a like a big bad villain in the second season that I can get behind more than just like, it's an invading army. I'm such a sucker for like monster of the week stuff though. Buffy, Supernatural, anything like that that like, Having an episodic, like, there's a monster vibe about anything is kind of like an automatic draw for me. Yeah, riding Roach through miles of gorgeous countryside, you know, like you had to do in the game. <laughs> like you had to do in the property that this is actually, like, based on. I mean, I know it's all based on a book, but, like, I don't know. Magical portals seems like a cheat. If you're gonna build this beautiful fantasy world full of like medieval age technology and an ecosystem for these witchers built upon like killing monsters, it seems like a real waste and like it would be kind of a waste of his time, talents, and also like his fiscal responsibilities for him to just be portaling everywhere and not organically finding these monsters. I don't know. I can see it occasionally, but like, I don't know. Magic portal seems kind of... And it... I guess the thing that bugged me was it's kind of a costless portal. Like, you go through it and your guts kind of get like scrambled, but like... There should be a magical component tree. There should be a cost of some kind to portal places. I feel like Witcher just like season two kind of just took a brisk walk past that as an option <laughs> as like a thing that would need to happen. Other than that, though, I found it to be really enjoyable. Loved it. Very fun.
I mean, not that like Harry Potter is the panel ultimate like fantasy reference for anything, but <sighs> teleportation in Harry Potter has a cost. It's extremely dangerous. You're risking your life. If you don't do it correctly, like you're you're boned but also there's also a material cost if you don't have flu powder and like a fireplace convenient to you it's not like you're gonna get into trouble that way as well it's not just like a oh bam portal One of my very favorite fantasy books is the Abhorsen series. I think it's Garth Nix. I might have to check that though. Yeah, Garth Nix. That series has some of the, like it's only ever really been a book, but it has some of the craziest like riding a horse out of danger, sweeping countrysides, traveling up on like lakes in like ships that you barely made it to because you were being pursued by, you know, some horrible undead like monster. That those uh, books have like a very grounded, very real like travel cost that you feel. <laughs> get messed up just just the travel sometimes so they're by garth nix it's called the abhorsen trilogy or series it used to be a trilogy now there's more but it basically is the story of a, a set of kingdoms. There's two adjoining sort of like lands and there's a wall that separates them. The new kingdom has sort of like steampunk style technology, like they're kind of like advancing their machinery and stuff like that. The old kingdom is very much like rooted in magic, necromancy, kind of medieval architecture, that kind of stuff. But this wall that divides it um, divides more than just like the land. Because as you get closer to the wall in the new kingdom, the technology breaks down. And as you get out towards the edges of the new kingdom, your magic breaks down. So it's kind of like this wall separates these two areas of extremely different and clashing like I don't know core core mechanics I guess it kind of feels like the old kingdom is very like D&D &D, Witcher and the new kingdom is very um like Murdoch Mysteries Warehouse 13 it has kind of like that like like steampunky vibe to it very very cool but basically what happens is there is a mage or i guess he's more of like a caretaker in the old kingdom called the abhorsen and his responsibility is to combat necromancers who bring back the dead for evil purposes so he's a necromancer but his job is to put the dead back and he um he has this daughter that is at like private school in the new kingdom just across the wall and he goes missing so like that's kind of like the first 10 pages is she finds out that he's gone missing and has to make some heavy life decisions <laughs> but it's very cool there's and it's like I didn't I have loved these books since I was like probably 12 um I didn't realize that this was kind of a zombie story until I made Brando read them and he was like yeah zombies are cool and I was like zombies what because like never are they referred to as zombies in the whole series it's sort of just like undead but there's like different kinds 
there's different kinds of undead things so there's kind of like it's got a body that's kind of decomposing but there's also different kinds of dead things like there's things that are purely like spirit and stuff like that all very very uh nefarious like they're here for like to do harm hi natalie good morning don't worry about it if you're quiet or laggy you're waiting at the hospital oh no i hope your dad is doing okay that's really stressful even even like very minor surgery is just freaks me out everything goes really well and his recovery is quick and easy Garth Nix books are like my my number one reading recommendation. I also really like the original Sherlock Holmes books. I think those are very cool. That's very scary, Natalie. I hope everything goes well. Hopefully you and the rest of your family are holding up okay too. like m2 or the m1 like ipad pro is going to necessarily be that much of a game changer um this thing has like an instant save like even to my network drive which is crazy yes the collection of complete sherlock i like i don't have the hardcover or annotated i just have like the soft cover uh collected works amazing so good trying to stay chill I feel that, yeah. Well, we're thinking about you. Ugh, so rough. This comic is going to have, um, he's actually getting this one because the last stint didn't work. Oh no.
myrtle leaf wall. I like these flowers. These flowers turned out cool. These are supposed to be... Uh, I don't remember. Let me look it up. Let me look it up in the reference sheets. I'm glad you have a buddy. Waiting waiting for people to get out of surgery by yourself is horrible. So I'm glad you guys are there together. waiting for surgery I'm the one getting the surgery <laughs> um, I experienced that last year when my sister had her baby though she had to go into surgery and get an emergency c-section and it was like uh, just freaking out sure you know that oleander is poisonous. Yes, it's a magical component that we're using here. <laughs> yes, this is new iPad, Natalie. This is, I, I was gonna wait till I have a case that's not gonna like turn me into a shrimp. Um, but we're just using a Squishmallow today because I, I didn't want to use the Huon tablet. I wanted to use new toy. I will not be drawing the whole day on it because I'm gonna go work on a YouTube video after this, or I will go move to the couch where it's like a little less shrimpy. <laughs> I just wanted to use my new, my new art supply. My new art friend. I'm glad I got the oleander reference pretty close though. That's cool. No one will be eating the oleander. Um, it's going to be used to reanimate a small, a small friend. By alchemical and scientific means. signal is terrible so the video isn't working i just thought i'd drop by natalie i appreciate you coming by please please let us know in the discord how everything goes today i hope i hope this was like even a couple of minutes of distraction i'm sorry it didn't load good hospitals i have the worst cell phone reception ever
But yes, I am aware that oleander is very poisonous. You, one may even say that I chose them specifically. <laughs> Intentionally, even. Did on purpose? Yes, I did. Apple store to pick this up yesterday because I wasn't about to be waiting two weeks for this to arrive shipping wise I'm like I haven't experienced it directly yet that was my first experience with like the dead mall phenomena <laughs> that is weird it's weird like all of the restaurants are gone There's a ton of those just like storefronts that they've just kind of put ads in front of. Very weird. Tell me why the Lululemon store was still popping though. Why is there a storefront for Lululemon? I watched part of the documentary. Aren't you guys an MLM? <laughs> That's totally different from how they were awful before. Yeah, it's it's they used to be awful. Anyways, I I didn't love malls to begin with, but now it's like there's still people there because like we were in line at the Apple store for a little bit. Like the Apple store is still popping. The Crate and Barrel was still okay, but there was a lot of stuff in between that was like just shuttered. It was weird. had big like dying dying um midwest americana vibes like abandoned dilapidated diner kind of what's the like there's a word that's just with an l that i keep seeing around that's like spaces that are kind of like abandoned or or that people just kind of travel through but don't stay in Was called there's a word for it luminal yeah
liminal. Liminal is, yeah, liminal. Mm -hmm. So it had that kind of like changing into a liminal space kind of like vibe. It was weird. It's very weird. Trying to work out what this shadow on her face is gonna look like. Cryptid, cryptid nerd supposed to be Mothman or a childlike version of the fly? Cryptid nerd. I'm not, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a Mothman character. Are you talking about the comic or are you talking about liminal space? I do love Mothman though.
there's a there's a cryptid there's a cryptid hunter like a ghost hunter kid he's he's a bat boy he's not a, mo a mothman or the fly I'm not really into cryptids but i want to visit the mothman statue <laughs> this shiny metal butt yeah <laughs> yeah yes I'm all about that statue. He's very cool. That statue is incredible. The artistic choices that were made in the production of that sculpture to give him an inhuman face, but junk in the trunk. <laughs> and the world's most perfect, like, what is it? Like 10 pack? It's absolutely ridiculous. And then just like a face full of antennas, like so funny and good. The person who designed that sculpture, a true artist. No idea, dude. Weird. not that Mothman sculpture for sure because have some goddamn respect. Don't you know he's a harbinger of doom? Are you trying to bring about the fall of humanity? statue so we have I'm trying to this comic is like 22 pages um, I'd like to get it perfect bound instead of staple bound But I have to like cram a couple of extras in there to get it perfect bound. What do you guys think I should include in the back? Like the character sheets and stuff? Like the design pages? Or should I do like illustrations of the characters doing different things? Pinups? You want pinups? Actually, yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Like a, like a crazy mad scientist of uh, Vesper and like a real weird detail eldritch horror of um, Peepers. I 
I think that would be cool. Design stuff is good too. Yeah, my design stuff is always pretty like, it's pretty rough though. thinking about doing um, like an architectural drawing of the house the like haunted house that might be a little outside of my um, current skill set but I think it's worth a try plus I'm all about that personal boundaries <laughs> right that's what I'm talking about though Mignola's com comics have some of the most beautiful sketch pages I've ever seen in the back mine are way rougher than that set a reference layer. Poor Clip's like, what are we referencing here? Where's your lines? What do we do with? Like, listen, Linda, you better give me something to look at, otherwise you get nothing. Vesper's not dead. I also think main character main character death in comics is a cop out. if the story is centered around one person like you either have to full stop end or you have to superman them back to life <laughs> yeah she's a mad scientist alchemist why wouldn't she live forever as long as mad science can contain her or <laughs> can sustain her yeah <laughs> now the highlights dang it go back
also have weird feelings about the people creating content, comics, movies, TV shows, um, like long form podcasts, plots. I have weird feelings about the creators of those things making things canon outside of the actual works. I feel like if you if you were not careful in your writing and intentional and you didn't put things into your writing to suggest things, this is like this gets back to that one um that one horror movie that I watched over the holidays where literally by the end of the movie I couldn't figure out what like who the bad guy was what the plot of the movie was um and i had to go like look at articles and the guy had explained it afterwards and i was like okay so like you've completely failed at your directorial mission here which was to communicate a story so you failed so historically on on like communicating a story to your audience that we honestly have no idea who the bad guy is so like yeah so just just straight up if it isn't in the comic it is not canon so the bat boy the cryptid subject to change at any time he does not appear in the comic yet so like he's not canon if that makes sense so to answer your question about her aging or physically changing, the current span of time in the comic is one night. So, no. I have big, I have big feelings about that. Like, if you're not going to be... Yes, the, the stuff that JKR has added retroactively that she did not support with her writing. The whole comes back to the whole show, don't tell. Also, show within the story, don't tell me after. Right? So, like, there's there are definitely occurrences where things things like sexual preference and stuff like that didn't come up in the book if it's not important to the story it's not going to come up like if it doesn't serve or drive the story in some way it may not come up within the story however i think if you're going to create work like that if it doesn't come up in the story it doesn't count you have to you have to support that with the actual work you can't just do an interview afterwards and explain who the killer was Anyway, strong feelings. <laughs> I've I have big feelings about that. Well, and like also Devin, she didn't really write any kind of construct that even supports that in the story. You know, we never see we never see what it would be like to be a non-binary or gender fluid wizard. We never see what it would be like to be a wizard who has same sex preferences. Like that's not, that's never addressed. <laughs> it's never, it doesn't ever come up. She doesn't ever talk about it within the context of the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Like it doesn't exist. So how can you come in after the fact and retcon that like specific characters have these other parts their their personality and their character that you didn't even address as a story beat as a world building like concept well yeah i mean that's a whole other thing but like how fascinating would that be to have a character kind of like tonks that just wasn't wasn't nailed down to gender like binary like that would be so much more interesting to me i don't know there's also her whole argument about it. it's a kid's book like 
it's a kids book but there's also kids who are who are non-binary there are children who are who are going to realize post puberty at some point that they are not interested in what society deems to be their like their gender binary whatever anyway this kind of stuff as a a white straight lady kind of not my area I think everybody is entitled to hold space and that's kind of where I'm at in the world so I don't have any I have opinions on how things like that should be handled with in content creation because I am a content creator, but I, I can't speak on that as like a human, if that makes sense to you guys. I think, I think that little goth kids should be as represented as little prep kids and that carries to everything else in life. I think your I think your work should stand on its own. The the weird part about the internet age is that people can expand things just by talking about them on Twitter. So like we can add to the Steven Universe canon with fan art and fan writing and talking to the creators on Twitter and like does that count though if it isn't like it, it's not I don't know. I'm not saying fan art and fan writing don't count. What I'm saying is those are different stories. Those are written by different people with different experiences. I think if a creator comes back and decides to retcon things 20 years after they wrote the book, I don't know that that should count because you didn't put it in the book. <laughs> I understand like the HP Lovecraft thing. The dude was a notorious and very well-known racist. This kind of enters into like the whole, can we enjoy the work without connecting it to the artist, which I haven't really solidified an opinion on. I think it's fair to create more stories within the same world. I don't know that it's fair to come back and make and get to like redecide story beats or character decisions later. I don't know. What do you guys think? didn't improve Star Wars, didn't improve Blade Runner, didn't improve E.T. <laughs> and here's, here's the other thing. If your work survives, but your Twitter history is lost to the, lost to the sands of time, what are we, what are we going to see? How are we going to connect that retcon? Or is it just going to be your work that stands on its own? And like the Star Wars retcon, like that was like so weirdly intentional to go back and actually change the movies. That's so like weird. There's 
there's yeah i think there's there's wrinkling out the kinks and then there's rewriting parts of the story that didn't make sense to people or the whole Hanshaw first thing where you literally change a character point that was introductory and kind of critical kind of like a it, it gives you kind of intention behind the whole character <laughs> and you just went back and swapped it it's really easy to work on something forever yeah you have to decide when it's done it's the same thing with storytelling you have to decide when you're done tweaking things when the character is good enough to be presented yeah, let your babies leave the nest and make new ones. I keep trying... This is something I've experienced in the last year. I keep trying to go back and repaint my um, Nosferatu and my Swamp Thing and my Plague Doctor, like, digital paintings. And every time Brando's like, nope, move forward move forward you're gonna get trapped in a loop just redoing the same work over and over again and i will i will if i go back and i do that it's gonna be like and i think there's a difference between like a redraw to find to see like the, your level and just kind of repainting the same thing and getting trapped in that loop of like now my skills are better so i have to redo all of this other work like let your let your work stand and then move forward from that point write your book and then write another book in the same world you don't have to go back and rewrite the same thing if part of it didn't turn out how you liked also like that might be part of the part of the story that really resonated with somebody and you come back with like the star wars sweep it under the rug retcon and ruin the things that people loved about it I think it's incredibly hard to retcon things without ruining the original work. There's a choice that was made in the beginning of because you change over time doesn't mean your work needs to. Yeah, it's fair. There's a choice that was made that I really respect in the beginning of the TV show Charmed. One of the actresses decided that she didn't want to work on the show anymore. And instead of restarting the show with a new actress, they gave her character an extremely meaningful and extremely poignant death. So yes, they wrote her off because she didn't want to work on the project anymore, but they did it in a way that I really, that I really respect. They, they chose to give her and the other characters who remained such an anchoring point in the show rather than just restarting the whole thing over again with a new actress like just calling a reset on the whole thing retconning that she never existed they left her and they left her work as it stood and they continued forward instead Yeah, I think you're right, Devin. I think at some point you have to be able to close the book on your work, put it on the shelf, display it proudly, and move on to the next thing. Yeah, Tasha Yar. So, like, Next Generation, she wanted off of the show, and instead of 
instead of just replacing her with like another red shirt and just kind of like yeeting that character they made it a, a main like a main character point for the characters that survived I think that's I think that's the way to do it I don't know. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of like, I'm a story, um, purist though. I've learned in the last like year as I've kind of worked on illustrations and learned more about storytelling and more about visual storytelling. I have found that I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to like, <laughs> if you didn't write it, it didn't happen. Kind of. That, that is definitely like, an unpopular opinion but I think it's definitely like it's not an opinion that a lot of people are going to have and I think it has to be supported with like you have to show your audience what you're talking about you can't just you can't just tell it. Now, granted, these are some pretty bold claims for somebody who is currently shading a panel of their very first comic, and you're welcome to judge this according to my opinions. <laughs> it's not going to stack up, I guarantee it. I just started doing this. I'm hoping that despite that, it's still something that can be enjoyed. There's something just so weird to me about like the Star Wars books and animated shows and movies and, and like the retcon of the original movies and the reboot movies and the prequel movies like that's such a vast universe that almost at this point anyone could write anything in the Star Wars universe and have it be contained because it's so big now I don't know it's 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 such a weird fine line don't want to have to play a video game use the app read the prequel comic and listen to a podcast just to appreciate the film yeah yeah and surface of, of capitalism yeah That also 
also kind of takes us to like what was the original did you make this because you loved it or did you make this because someone paid you to make it and I think that sometimes you can tell I don't think all the time and there's definitely like am I making this comic because people are going to give me money to read this comic yes am I also making this comic because this is a story that is like that's just stuck with me and this character just like held on for dear life and I can't shake it and I just wanted to create it and it just wanted to be born yeah yeah I don't think it has to be both or I don't think it has to be either or I think it can be both but like it's a service that I'm providing to other people that I would already be doing Instagram and Twitter doesn't exist and Etsy doesn't exist like I'd still be creating art I saw the most amazing TikTok the other day where someone was talking about the creative process and she her take on it was the only inherent talent that an artist has, an artist of any kind, music artist, film artist, is the desire to create. And everything else is a skill. And like, it's kind of rare that I'll be scrolling through TikTok and something will just like hit me in the face like a brick wall, but that one did. And it was like, it resonated so hard that like, I was like, oh my God. And I had to like, like it, save it, send it to Brando. And he was like, actually, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it is definitely an interesting line to walk. concept that they talk about on you are a storyteller that everything in life is a story from like you telling a story to a friend about something that happened to you in your day like an anecdote to you writing a memo like everything everything is a story and the idea that story is something that is so human and it's something that's so old that we've told each other and told ourselves as long as we've existed and that a lot of times story story transfers to other humans survival things things to help us survive and that is like medicine story becomes medicine I think that 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 like again that's something that I was listening to that podcast and I was like that is a brick wall that I have just like full stop whatever else I was doing I have now stopped and we are just like standing in front of this concept a story is used to communicate to another human a survival strategy Podcasts, I have a hard time with podcasts too because sometimes when I'm working, I don't want talking. I just want some kind of like, like what we're listening to now, I want some like ambient noise. Speaking of, I forgot to check how loud this is. It's probably a, a touch, a touch loud. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry if you had any like weird sensory issues with the overblown audio. <laughs>
So I don't know. That's just like takeaways. The only talent that an artist inherently has is the urge to create. And stories are everywhere. Stories are everything in life. And they are used to transmit survival strategies to other humans. I think those are like, I think those are really, really cool kind of pillars to begin with. I also think that those things don't those things don't mean that stories can't be frivolous and fun and entertaining because that's how you get the stories to stick that's how you get the survival information to to stick in somebody's brain to stay kind of where it's planted Like, think about the the hair in the briar patch. The whole, like, the whole concept of, oh no, throw me in the briar patch. Like, that is actually legitimately a survival technique that our ancestors would have had to use. Probably broader than Don't Eat the Oleander. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, slow and steady wins the race. The tortoise and the hare. It's it's not survival information. I think it used to be. I think it used to be survival information like don't eat the oleander. <laughs> and they probably told stories about people who did eat the oleander. Yeah, emotional survival is a thing for sure. It's also like the wolf in sheep's clothing their their um, archetypes the survival information is sometimes in archetypes so the wolf in sheep's clothing um, don't let oleander is a plant a poisonous plant this this poisonous plant right here general life navigation mm -hmm. yeah But they, like, when stories were used to communicate solely, um, the danger of death on a daily was, like, very real. <laughs> but I think it's also, it doesn't have to be, like, like, the three little pigs or the, you know, the boy who cried wolf. It doesn't have to be these things that are kind of, like, inherent to, to our, like, inherent archetypes to our culture. I think it also can be like um the story that you told earlier in chat Devin your uncle went in and got several stints and every time he came out smiling and he was fine like that's a story that has a positive message that is that is um conveying to someone else an experience where things ended well it's it's conveying to another person hope and like do you get what I'm saying it's kind of like a it, like a story doesn't have to necessarily be like it's a kid's book it's written down somewhere like story is so much broader than that the story of me going to the apple store and traveling through this like weird mall like that's it's not as like it's not long it doesn't have a beginning a middle and an end there wasn't really necessarily a point to it but it's still it's still a story with kind of a core that like everything dies even malls <laughs> I don't know it's just weird it's weird to examine it's one of the coolest things that I've learned over the last year is just kind of like getting into this as a subject love Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is incredible. That's such a cool quote from him too.
All right. Well, we didn't talk extensively about coloring comics, so I'll probably have to change the title of this stream, but that's okay. As expected, I never really know what we're going to talk about. I always just guess. I hope you guys have an amazing week. We will see you on Thursday. I have greatly enjoyed talking and chatting with you about storytelling. I hope you guys have had a relaxing and nice time as well. Thanks for working on the comic with me today. Working on this little greenhouse scene. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.